Do you consider yourself an entrepreneur? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and what do you what what is about that? I mean, what is about that term, or what is it that? Well, I'm somebody that likes to work for myself, uh, think of new ideas, and try to execute on them. So, it's funny. I, I haven't had. A, you know, I'm a serial entrepreneur that I've had lots of little businesses and you know, kind of spotty here and there. But even when I was working for big corporations, I always thought of myself inside like I'm an entrepreneur and I got to figure out a way to do my own thing. So uh, even uh, you might have said I worked at Sony at one point. Wow, you're working for Sony? How could you possibly be an entrepreneur? But uh, I was biding my time to do something entrepreneurial there. So so let's talk about that actually for a second. So because you know you helped, you had a hand in discovering Nine Inch Nails, right? Right. right. And <laughs> which is a big deal. I mean, some people yeah, would yeah. think like that's really cool. Like yeah. and like at that point, yeah, I can retire. You know, but uh, so you're at a company, you're at Sony, and you're putting this stuff together. What's the feeling like? Is there just like a visceral feeling, like you're just like, I got, I got to get out of here. I, I, I don't like being in all these conference calls and all these meetings. Or besides um, like discovering bands, seems well, like the clarity is actually uh, Nine Inch Nails. I discovered at a very small label, which was you know I was it was, it was almost like an entrepreneurial label called TBT Records. Okay, so that okay. was a, that was a very small thing. Um, you say that but, so like offhand, like well, when I discovered Nine Inch Nails, I was at a small, well, a small label. Yeah, small but label. They yeah. became a big, yes. huge phenomena, but uh, uh, and I made no money on that, so oh. I left that company because <laughs> I couldn't stand working for somebody. <laughs> really, so, even then, so even for like a small. Yeah, it was like one of those things thing. where like I would just see like the way it was being run. I'm like, ah, if I could just get my hands on this thing, I would do it differently. And uh, and you can only for so long feel that way about something. And uh, and I think there have been very few companies I've worked for where I felt like, okay, I really respect my bosses, and I think they're just fantastic. And I and I and I and I, and I would you know I w wouldn't change a thing. And I think Getty Images is one company I worked for a very short time where I thought, well, this is great. Um, but having said that, I think that Label is a good example, and um, I was at Real Networks very early. I was the only non-engineer. I think I was employee 31 or 29, something like that. I can't remember the exact number, but I was a very early employee there. I was a kind of guy for the media business coming in, helping make deals for them. But even there, that was very early days. So I've been involved in some companies. Even Getty, when I went to Getty, they had just bought Photodisc in Seattle, and they, they were this small company. So I've been close to other entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. even that, uh, that Nine Inch Nails Label experience, which wasn't a good experience for me. But I was very close to the entrepreneur who started that. I worked for him, so I saw the process and I saw what it meant to be an entrepreneur. And I think that also helped me be inspired myself. Um, and you know, it wasn't just the fact that I wanted to do my own thing and I was, you know, very driven to kind of create new ideas and, and execute on them. But I think it was the fact that I also was, saw how entrepreneurship works, and it, it was very appealing to me. So, so let's, let's talk about that for a second. Then, so you know, you're saying. It's not necessarily that you can build a better mousetrap, but it almost seems like, because you were at Real before starting Adam, right? Correct. So it's like you were almost building a different mousetrap, right? So you're looking and you're going, not necessarily I can do uh, video technology, distribution technology better, right. or video player technology better, but so when you were at Real, what were you thinking? What kind of sparked the idea for you to get Adam Films? Well, I have thought about way back when CD-ROMs were hot, that there was there got to be a different kind of content you can put on these CD-ROMs. So the CD-ROMs were, some of them were very beautiful, some of them made by Starwave were very beautiful, but they were kind of boring. I thought, there's got to be something interesting and fun to do with these things. And then when the internet came along, and I was working you know, right at the front lines of it, uh, and real video came along with real networks, I thought, wow, maybe you know, some, some shorter form content would work. And I'd, and I'd already had a passion for animation and a lot of kind of offbeat short films. I'd for, for years, I collected them, actually, on VHS tapes. So I was like, okay, I had this passion for this content category. And this, they all kind of came together. I said, well, and I've now seen other people start businesses. I've worked for other you know, entrepreneurs. I was like, you know what? I can do this. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, you know, it was so, it was less about doing something different than real. It was more like this idea I had and just technology came along and said, okay, this is, this is time for this thing. I mean, in some ways, I was, even then I was early because YouTube came along and did a lot better later in some ways, but it was very much a similar idea that we had back then in 98. So.